Welcome back, everybody, to episode 25 of the Aurelia City Series in Cities Skylines. We are still around the soon-to-be main park, and in the last episode we built the Arch, which is a monument kind of symbolizing an entrance into this district, this part of the city. Right behind the Arch we have some office and apartment buildings together with the corridor buildings, which create some sort of a tunnel for trams to go through this hill. And where there are trams, there obviously need to be tram stops. And in this place in particular, we have built a transfer station between the two tram lines that go through this location. This place is supposed to be a lower density residential area, and that's exactly what we are going to continue building in today's episode. We will build a lot of smaller residential buildings all around this place with some nice detailing, a lot of trees, flowers, and all those kinds of things. And obviously make the entire place uh, nicely functional, walkable, so people can leave their cars at home and just walk to the tram stops nearby. So let's go. All right, so this is actually something completely new, something we haven't really done in Aurelia, well, ever. I don't suppose that uh, we have built uh, some really low-density areas just yet. And to be completely fair, this place is definitely not going to be low-density, at least not compared to some, you know, suburban housing estates and all those kinds of places, right, in real life. But it's definitely going to be the lowest density that we have ever built in the city yet. So it's going to be something new, something something fresh, something more interesting. I'm definitely going to be using all these kinds of buildings. Uh, well, they are definitely like multi-story buildings, probably for more than just one family and all that, but uh, probably not more than just uh, just a few, right? So it's definitely going to be uh, lower density than what, uh, what we've been doing uh, so far. Now, this place is definitely going to be very interesting in terms of figuring out all the height differences or how am I going to use the height differences in this place to continue building all these streets and obviously positioning the buildings. So I decided to just go with that uh, slightly wider road all around this hill and kind of uh, merge it into some sort of a main-ish road which is uh, on the other side of this uh, tram corridor. We are going to see more of this tram corridor by the way, uh, maybe actually right now. I'm not actually sure how the video is going to continue but uh, yeah, I think this is the part. So at first I really wanted to hide one part uh, in particular of this corridor and that is the parking spot. It, it has kind of like a rooftop parking spot uh, which is kind of strange and I wanted to cover it with something and at the same time use that uh, nicely uh, nicely shaped uh, like an entrance on the side of the corridor. And uh, I put that uh, procedural object uh, high-rise building there but I sunk it into the ground to make it look a lot smaller and it's basically going to be some sort of an entrance for pedestrians into the, the, the platform. I think this building is actually called the platform on the top of it, right? Now we are still using procedural objects in here and I'm doing something something quite interesting. I am basically extending this, uh, this building so that it's going to go all the way to the road on the opposite side. I wasn't really sure how to do the opposite side. I was really really lost uh, in there. I kind of wanted to do something very similar uh, to what we already did on the other side, you know, with all those rounded buildings, but it didn't look exactly that great. So I decided to just extend this building all the way to that road, and we're going to do something completely different there. So it, uh, it definitely turned out nice. I was kind of afraid that uh, using procedural objects on a really complex building like this one is going to just turn it into, into a complete mess, but uh, it worked. It worked uh, very, very nice. The building now is not symmetrical. Those uh, entrances for pedestrians are not in the middle of the building, obviously because I extended only one side of it. But uh, it's definitely going to look uh, interesting uh, even thanks to that. Now, I really wanted to blend the surfaces on uh, on top of this platform, so I used the gravel for the like a walkable surface, and then I just use uh, the texture for the grass that I use for all the grassy areas uh, on the platform, which were very, very bright, and the color was just not really uh, fitting that place. You could have probably seen that actually in the opening shots and uh, probably the previous episode as well, that the places were just not really uh, matched, right, in terms of uh, textures. Now, we're almost uh, almost uh, done on this side of the hill because this side, uh, at the beginning of the video, you could have seen me actually put uh, the same looking buildings. Oh, wait, I haven't done that yet. Uh, well, whatever. I, I'm just going to put uh, this little street in here and now I'm going to put the same looking buildings as we've used uh, previously uh, in the previous episode uh, right near the arch. And we're going to put them over here to kind of mark the end of this uh, level of uh, of the 
of the hill area, right? And uh, I also started putting some buildings on the top. I'm, I'm not sure how they were called. I think they're called Grange or something like that. Those kinds of buildings that I placed on the top. Uh, very, very nice, uh, very recent addition to the workshop and uh, definitely very, very, uh, very perfect for this place that uh, that I wanted to really have here. Now, we are back with that uh, corridor building on the opposite side here and uh, this is what I was talking about. So, I really wanted to put something on this side, right? We have uh, the the entrance to the to the corridor for the trams and around it we need to we need to do something to kind of uh, hide the fact that the corridor is a building because I am trying to treat the corridor as a tunnel so that it's just going to look like it's cutting through the hill and it's not like a separate building so we need to create the impression that there is uh, some kind of a some kind of a wall right where the entrance is like a wall of buildings or terrain it doesn't really matter obviously buildings are easier because you can shape them much uh, much freely with procedural objects and all that and that's kind of what I'm doing right here so I'm creating an area that I'm actually not going to finish today because it is going to be connected to the place over this road over the main road where the trams are uh, you know connecting to right so this place is going to be finished uh, in some in some later episodes but uh, today we are going to put those uh, like a shopping gallery buildings ag procedural objects of course to make the shape a bit more a bit more custom and obviously custom uh, surfaces on top for the grass and on the level of the buildings uh, just pavement nothing else right now but I am going to put some planters or I don't know maybe some different things in there as well but like I said it's going to be done when I'm going to uh, advance over that main road because those places are going to be kind of uh, kind of connected I want to place some maybe uh, over the road maybe some pedestrian uh, like walkways or something like that and I don't really want to don't really want to do any detailing until I have that finished but we're almost done with that and uh, now it's back to to the hill area so I was really not sure how to how to do this I really wanted to at first just put buildings absolutely everywhere like have buildings in uh, some nicely ordered layers or levels let's say but it was kind of clear that uh, it would look very very monotone and not exactly that great so I then use these uh, these roads to just twist all the way up kind of randomly and obviously as you can see here switch them for for the stone walk path which kind of symbolizes the the top level where cars are not really allowed to go at least not personal cars but obviously services have to go there so that uh, it kind of creates the impression that the top level the top layer of this uh, residential area is maybe a bit uh, a bit more luxurious or something like that you know for uh, maybe more expensive apartment buildings or something like that right so I'm putting these kinds of buildings up here, obviously making sure that all the roads are fitting. Later I am going to switch these buildings kind of around, make them uh, fit a bit better. I'm not sure if I'm showing it in here or not, but it's going to be kind of clear why am I going to do that when I'm going to do some detailing on the top here. Now this building, I was saying that it's going to be some sort of an entrance for pedestrians into that uh, corridor building or on top of the corridor building. So. I'm not sure what this is supposed to be in, uh, well, if you are going to use this building, how it is supposed to be used without procedural objects, but it's some kind of a, like a smaller footprint floor or something or roof area where there were some railings all around that I had to get rid of with procedural objects and maybe like a pool. I'm not really sure, but I just covered it with, uh, with gravel and later I'm going to put uh, some pedestrian walkways, uh, walk paths over it. Now, this place in here is uh, like a connection between the lower level and the top level for pedestrians only. I'm just putting these, uh, these stairs over here and trying to put them nicely on the side of this hill. Quite recently, I started using, you could have seen me do that in the previous episode as well, I started using these, uh, these railings. These are supposed to be used for the railroads. I think these come together with the railroad mod or railway mod, uh, which is excellent, by the way and it provides all kinds of different ways to customize your railroads and uh, this railing in particular is absolutely perfect for all kinds of stairs and all kinds of pedestrian areas as well because it's a network it's not a terrain conforming network which is really important for these kinds of uh, you know jobs and uh, it just looks great it looks great it's kind of like a industrial look to it with the concrete base obviously so it's it's really good it's really good and i like to use it 
in those kinds of situations. Now on the top here, these buildings, you can notice that uh, they have like a walk path on their own, of their own, on the on the back of it. It's like a like a little area with benches. It has like a like trash cans and all that, which I get rid of later. But uh, it doesn't look good if they are not connected between the buildings. So these buildings are looking all right when you place them uh, right next to each other, which is something that I did in some later uh, previous areas of the city, actually, with these structures already. But in here, I didn't really want to have these buildings uh, right, right next to each other, or at least all of them, because it's supposed to be a slightly lower density area. So I just took procedural objects and basically took the entire building and uh, sunk the the actual building underground so that only the walk path is visible. And then I could just use the walk path to connect uh, the, the true walk paths that are part of the actual buildings, right? And this is what I was talking about, just putting these paths all over the place to, to just make everything functional and, uh, you know, just people can walk around. Uh, so I used just the regular path, the vanilla path, elevated and uh, connected to the roads where I wanted them and then obviously switched them for for the invisible path, which, is, uh, which isn't which is going to make it really, really, really nice looking. And by the way, the invisible path is slightly, slightly narrower than... Uh, and the vanilla path, this one, which means that uh, even if the stairs are obviously a bit more uh, a bit more narrow than this path, then if you're going to switch it for the invisible one, the people are not really going to go through the railings or something like that. Now, this is very important in here. Uh, we, we are going to revisit this place, the, the transfer stop that we have built uh, previously already. And I'm going to put these uh, like elevator entrances on the sides of the let's say middle support the middle concrete support for that uh, for the rooftop right and this is very important because that's obviously going to be used uh, that's going to be functional and going to be used by pedestrians to reach the platform uh, on the top of this roof and obviously all the rest of this of this area so that uh, people can actually use this transfer stop to even go to that residential buildings on the top of this hill right otherwise it would be kind of a long way to go for them and they probably would not use that stop at all and probably just would use cars which is not really that big of a deal because this area doesn't really hold that many people but obviously it's going to look very very nice when people are going to be walking all over these rooftops and you're going to see that in the cinematics i have prepared special shots for these uh, for these uh, walk paths so that you're going to see how this place looks like when people are walking over it as you can see it was not exactly easy to set everything up i am definitely showing just a couple of uh, time lapse shots in here but it took me kind of a kind of a long time to set all these paths but it was definitely quite rewarding to see it to see it work now, I'm not exactly all that super happy about uh, the trees and all that in this area. I only used a couple of uh, different kinds in here, but in the end it actually turns out turned out looking looking all right. I kind of wanted to use even some pine trees and all that because I am doing that in other parts of the city, but I kind of figured that we are right next to the park and the park is going to see a lot of trees and all kinds of different uh, you know places with uh, greenery. So, it's kind of going to be fine, you know, around this place. Now, I am not exactly liking the texture for for the for the cliffs that I have uh, on the map. It kind of looks all right when you zoom out. It really looks good when you zoom out, but zoomed in, not so much. So I am using these decals to change uh, in some places only, in some places only to change the the looks of it. And I definitely like this one a bit more. It's a it's a lot darker, but it kind of fits this place uh, fits this place uh, quite nicely. All right, guys, so that was all for today's episode. I really hoped you liked it. If you did, then definitely consider giving it a thumbs up, comment underneath it, and share it with your friends. And obviously, you can subscribe to the channel as always. And I'm going to see you next week, hopefully, with episode 26. I'm not yet sure where exactly we're going to continue, but I'm definitely going to figure something out. All right, guys, so again, thank you for watching today's episode. Take care and goodbye.